Unit 4. Okay, so you made it. Unit 4. Uh, we're kind of really now getting into the real meat uh, of this course. And in my opinion, Unit 4 is probably is one of the, the trickier um, units of the course, I think. It's one of the more uh, difficult to explain. And if you're not kind of used to these ideas, I think it's one of the trickier things to kind of get your head around. So we're going to go through this unit slowly. It's probably going to be one of the um, longer units, but uh, we will definitely get there. So in unit three, in the last unit, we we developed this idea that your world, your phenomenal world, your subjective world, the world you experience from moment to moment, is this pattern of activation of cortical columns. Um, and that your world is always this pattern of activation uh, of your co cortical columns. And we looked at um, the idea that your the world you experience is this hierarchically structured world. It's a world of higher order objects that you recognize as things like cameras or faces uh, or trees or animals. Uh, but these can at the same time be broken down into um, their, uh, their components, you know, their lines and, and colors and textures and movement and edges and that kind of thing. And the reason that your world appears like that is because that is the way your brain constructs that model in a hierarchical fashion. Um, from lower order um, features, uh, lower order types of information, uh, through to higher order uh, forms and objects. Um, and, and that's because different cortical columns, different areas, cortical columns in different areas of the cortex, are able to, or must, or can only uh, represent and generate certain types of information. So we have areas uh, that are responsible for color information. We have areas that are responsible for uh, detecting and representing uh, lines or edges or textures, etc., etc. Um, so, <clears throat> whilst this world that you experience is always this model, it clearly has a relationship to the environment, right? I told you at the beginning that your world is a model, but it's a model of the environment. It's your brain's attempt at creating a functional, working, useful model of the environment. So there is obviously a relationship between the information that your brain is generating, the model that you're experiencing, and the outside world. And in this unit, we're going to explore that relationship. Okay, so I think the best thing to do uh, for, for this unit, for the first half at least, uh, is to actually is to go to the board and, and, and work through some of these ideas slowly and then we'll come back and, and discuss them. Okay, so here we see something that should be very familiar to you now. Um, and, and it really must be familiar to you uh, by now. When you look at this, you should know what you're looking at. Uh, the fact that you're looking at a set of cortical columns that exist in a certain state at any point in time, uh, with some of the cortical columns uh, active, uh, the yellow ones, some are inactive, and that this pattern of activation is a single state of the cortex, uh, which is a pattern of information, um, and that this represents your entire world model at this point. Now, of course, we focus on the visual world because it's the most, it's the easiest to explain. But really, this this cortical column pattern of activation is uh, is your entire world. So that includes vision. Sorry, uh, includes vision, but also includes you know auditory and smells and everything that makes up your your subjective experience uh, of a world. Okay, so let's. For explanatory purposes, what we're going to do is go back to this simplified diagram with just a handful of columns, just 12 columns, because 12 columns, no, 16 columns, 
uh, because it's easier to explain. But we're, we're looking at the same thing here. And, and just to remind you, um, we, we, we spend quite a bit of time thinking about the idea that you know, columns are seg functionally segregated to represent different types of information, um, which we have kind of rather unrealistically represented simply as four columns for, for motion, color, form, uh, and texture. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll get rid of those labels now uh, and just look at the columns themselves. So, so this is a set of columns and um, th for each moment that you exist in a, uh, you know, you're conscious of a world, the, those columns will be in a certain pattern, in a certain state, which is a pattern of activation. And of course, um, your cortex is moving through um, these states. Just a quick word. So about sensory information. So in this unit, we're going to talk a lot about sensory information. And it's important when I say sensory information that you know what I'm talking about. So obviously, when I say sensory information, uh, I'm kind of referring to information that's coming fr through the senses, right? So it's information that's coming through the eyes or the ears or, or, or the sense of touch, uh, but particularly through the eyes uh, because we're focusing on the visual, uh, the visual world specifically. But of course, your brain does very much exist in a dark box. Your skull is an entirely dark box. Uh, no light information gets into your brain as such. Um, but light activates photosensitive receptors at the back of your eye in the retina and, and generates action potentials. And it's the action pe potentials that are passed um, to the back of the brain, to the visual cortices, and they activate certain um, columns. And so that's what we talk about, uh, what's, that's what we mean, uh, that's what I mean uh, when I'm talking about sensory information. I'm talking about those patterns of action potentials that are arriving from uh, the sensory apparatus. Now remember that the cortical columns are connected to each other. And that means that they have an, in, uh, an influence on each other. So when one cortical column is activated, for example, it will have an influence on cortical columns to which it is connected. Now that could, of course, be uh, an excitatory connection. It could cause you know, columns to which it is connected to the, for themselves uh, to be activated, or it, it could actually inhibit them. Uh, both are possible. Um, so it's not possible to kind of analyze these simple examples we're using and kind of work out um, you know, what, what, what the next state of the cortex is, is going to be. Um, um, but always the current state of the cortex and the columns which are, um, which are currently active will have an influence on the possible states uh, which are most likely to occur next because of course the model is always updating one state after the other. You live in a dynamic world, it's always changing. Uh, and the, uh, the next state, the new state that follows on from the current state will depend to some extent on, on, the, on, the, on the current state. Um, so let's look at that again, um, but this time we will introduce the idea of sensory information uh, and see how sensory information can actually guide um, the states, guide the update of, of the model from state to state. Okay, so here we have the, um, the current state of the system, and I'm going to pose a question. So given that this is the current state, the state the cortex is in now, the, uh, all, the, the entire informational structure of your world at that point in time, and I'm going to tell you that there are, let's say, four possible next states based upon the connectivity. Again, don't try and analyze this and work, work it out, uh, but we'll label these states. We'll say state one, state two, state three, and state four. Um, now, just by looking at this, there's no way for you to know uh, what the next state of the cortex is going to be. Um, however, if we introduce sensory information, we might get a better idea. So this again is the current state of the cortex, but now we've introduced this pattern of sensory information. Now this looks like um, 
three cortical columns, but it's not. Um, it is uh, some kind of pattern of action potentials, some kind of pattern of information that's coming from the sensory apparatus and which is going to activate a certain set of cortical columns, which is why I have, I have drawn it like this. And I'm going to tell you that this particular pattern of sensory information is going to activate these cortical columns. So here is your clue. So what's going to happen? These cortical columns are going to be activated and of course they are going to activate columns to which they are um, connected or at least have an influence on columns to which they are connected. So now when we look at this, these four future possible future states, next states, in light of what I told you before, it should be clear uh, in light of what I told you about how these, this pattern of sensory information is going to activate um, certain cortical columns, uh, you should be able to uh, work out which state is most likely. And of course, it is state one. Um, this pattern of information is going to activate these cortical columns, and then it's going to essentially complete the state by activating columns to which it is connected. So what sensory information has effectively done here is select the next state of the cortex. So from moment to moment, overall, what's happening is um, that your brain is receiving sensory information. You know, your brain is always generating a model of reality. It's always um, building this model from this pattern of activation. Uh, but sensory information essentially is matched to this ongoing activity. Um, and directs um, the, uh, the updating of the model. It directs uh, the next state. So the brain doesn't blindly move from state to state, purely directed by, uh, by patterns of connectivity and the way information flows from, cortex, from column to column, uh, but is actually uh, directed or modulated by these patterns of sensory information that are entering the brain uh, all the time. Okay, so we can now say that um, this pattern of sensory information selects this particular state of the cortex. Uh, and of course, that's going to apply for the next moment when, you know, as, as the, the model updates again and receives more information uh, from the environment. Now, we can summarize this then um, as a kind of three stage, uh, three step process. So in step one was where we started. So this is the, the brain is in its current state. It then receives sensory information which then selects the next state. And then this becomes the current state and then uh, more sensory information helps to direct uh, the next state. However, I'm going to let you in on a little bit of a, a secret, a bit of a heads up. Uh, we're gonna deal with this uh, in a lot more detail, in a, uh, a lot more deeply um, later on in this unit. But this, this way of, of thinking about uh, the role of sensory information, in that sensory information is in fact driving um, the update of your world model from moment to model, from moment to moment. That's right. Uh, this is kind of a, a classical kind of way of understanding perception. That that that, that sensation, that, sorry, the sensory information is kind of in control here. Um, whereas in the modern era, we think of things slightly differently. Um, so let's again have a look at this. So in this way, of, classical way of looking at it, um, the sensory information comes and, and actually, so sensory information comes here and actually directs the updating uh, of the, uh, the next state of the cortex. However, what we actually think is going on is that the current state actually moves directly to the next state and anticipates 
or predicts the pattern of sensory information uh, that then enters. So in step three is the sensory information, assuming that the prediction, sorry, my handwriting is terrible here, but hopefully you can make sense of that, scrawl, then the sensory information then enters the brain. Uh, and so what's happening here is that the brain is predicting. The brain is attempting to predict the sensory information based upon uh, what it knows about the structure of the world. The brain is attempting to predict the information um, that is entering the brain uh, from moment to moment. And again, we'll, we'll look at this in much more detail uh, later on in this unit. Uh, but for this video, my kind of take home message is that the role of sensory information uh, is to guide the brain. Your model is always constructed, and I'm repeating myself here, but it's really important. Your model, the um, world you experience, is always this model uh, constructed by your brain from information. Um, and the role of sensory information is to, in a way, guide um, the updating of that model from moment uh, to moment.